Uh, we, we did answer a few of the questions that were out there, but uh, I noticed that there were uh, quite a number of really good ones, and I wrote most of them down. Uh, this one might be for Pete, if you're still with us. Pete, one of the questions is, was what was the impact, or what is the impact, if you know, of slow-release phosphorus, such as tricalcium phosphate on, on P losses? Have you done any work with that? No, I... Uh I, I don't have any empirical data. I can speak uh, from some of the kind of principles that I generated. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the key things that are, when we're looking at environmental losses is differentiating between the background losses, um, which are associated with, with soil phosphorus desorption or release, and then these very rapid transfers that we'll see uh, either from a manure or an applied fertilizer. Those are what we call wash-off or incidental transfers. Um, and in as much as uh, you can uh, delay the release or meter out the release through uh, some type of a uh, slow-release uh, fertilizer, you would expect that acute loss, that incidental transfer that's associated with manure, that is really the, it, it's the critical concern the short-term concern, you'd expect it to be lower. Um, and that's the reason why if, uh, say, you, you put something like alum in a poultry litter or you amend <laughs> other types of manures with a, uh, a metal salt that actually ties up the phosphorus, uh, iron, aluminum, sometimes it be calcium, um, you can actually reduce the short-term losses of phosphorus just uh, by making that uh, less soluble or less available uh, to water. And so I would expect the potential for P loss or phosphorus loss to the drains to be uh, less with uh, the kind of um, fertilizers that you're describing. Thanks, Pete. Uh, there's one here that I thought was a good one for, uh, for Tim. Um, it, it was, uh, have you measured bacteria in drainage outflow? Uh, yes, I have. And... Um, it, we, we've done it uh, on uh, where we just had uh, no-till ground. We did it with the no-till, well, no-till ground with a litter application with an airway, so with aeration tillage. And we also did it on ground where we had air, uh, manure aeration tillage and, and a, a cover crop that we had desiccated. And it really, um, it really had, is, is largely influenced by rainfall intensity. Uh, if, if we had a one-inch rain in, in a day uh, within close proximity of the application, we saw uh, some fairly significant uh, movement of uh, fecal coliforms th through, the, through the tile line. So, uh, and and it, whether or not we had a cover crop in that case uh, didn't seem to make any difference. Um, and again, that was uh, it was a desiccated cover crop there. So we we are concerned about root channels and, and max force and that that thing. So um, yeah, when, when the bar is bacteriology, it, it's really really a challenge uh, to, to to keep that in, in, in the root zone, and uh, that's why low rates and, and uh, breaking the macropores and, and just being aware of what's happening in the field is pretty critical. Thanks, Tim. Uh, I I know Larry and I have been responding to questions in the chat box, so I'm going to take uh, one last question here. Uh, this one will be for Jim. Jim, uh, how much phosphorus will winter rye take up was a question. Do you know that? Um, actually, it's pretty easy. It's 0.2%. Uh, That's what almost all crops take up. So, so uh, if you take the total biomass times about 0.2%, uh, um, that's a pretty close. So most of the time, the cover crops are going to take up somewhere around 20 pounds, which maybe doesn't sound like a lot, but it, I think what has uh, part of the, the benefit of the cover crops is they keep adding organic matter. They improve that soil structure. If we can absorb some of that liquid and uh, keep that liquid in that soil profile so it has a chance, that's really what we're trying to do is, is I think the secondary effects of the cover crops may be even more important than the, than that primary effect of how much phosphorus it absorbs. Uh, how much soil organic matter can you add? And, and uh, that is a long-term process, obviously, but, but uh, the more we can improve our soil, I think the less tend to have less problems with preferential flow. If you can 
add more organic matter to the soils. Outstanding. Thanks. Um, I hope everybody uh, has uh, enjoyed this. Um, we really appreciate your attendance.